What's going on, guys? Well, another video in the, into the journey of uh, getting Nate's truck kind of restored. I'm trying to, I'm holding the camera freehand, so forgive me. There's nowhere in here to put a, to put a, a holder to hold the camera. I'm trying to get the truck started. Uh, there we go. There we go. But anyway, hold on a second. Say hey, Nate. Hey, Nate. <laughs> <sighs> We've been working on this truck trying to figure out why it's not getting the gas mileage it should. Well, if you didn't see the video on the exhaust, I'll leave a link in the description below for that. And you can go check it out. Did that help? Yes. Did that get it where it needs to be? No, it did not. Um, it was getting probably, I'm trying to remember, it was getting anywhere from five and a half to six and a half, maybe seven miles to the gallon. And it should be getting 15, 16. Now with the, with the miles that's on it, it's not gonna get the optimal uh, fuel mileage. I get that, I understand that, but it should be doing better than what it's doing, which is about 10 and a half to 11 miles to the gallon. So anyway, we're going, I'm riding down the road because I want to show you something that through some research I did um, is contributing to the problem. And then when we get back here to the house, I'm going to show you something else that I found out that is definitely contributing. And then the next part of the video is going to be teaching Nate how to fix his own truck. So let me get on the road and you guys please stay tuned. Get some airflow in here. Well, I got the windows down, son. I didn't mean with the windows. Well, you can't run the AC, dude. It ain't been charged. I hate EVs. It ain't got nothing to do with an <laughs> EV. It's got to you do say with, it's got a charge? It's got to do with lack of Freon. But anyway, remind, remind me to buy that when we go to the auto shop. Guys, if you're new to the channel and you clicked on this video for the first time, uh, I appreciate you doing so. If you don't know who we are, my name is Brian. His name is Nate. And where were these cars when you weren't talking? I know. It, it happens all the time. But anyway, we're the Big South Boys and you're watching... So what we're going to be doing, um, I got to drive it because I got to, in order to do this video successfully, I got to show you what it's doing and how we're going to fix it. Now I want you, I want you to watch this, the speedometer as I gain speed. I think it starts around 45 miles an hour. guys we are back i'm gonna cut the truck off and then we're gonna get under the hood and show you what's going on uh, nate i'm gonna pop this hood go out there and raise it up for me all right there we go now guys for those of you that have never seen anything about this truck this is a 1996 ford f-150 there's the f-150 look and it is Drum roll, please. It is an Eddie Bauer edition. 
Now this truck does not have the five liter. It's got the 5.8 liter. Yeah, Eddie owned it and he liked it so much he signed his name on it. Yeah. The thing that's causing the, uh, I'm going to get under the truck here in just a second. The thing that's causing the, the uh, majority of the problems. We put, we put rum in the oil instead of actual oil. Yeah. The thing that's causing the majority of the problems in this truck. Uh, let me get on the other side. Let me, uh, huh? Yes. All right, now, let me, uh, I've got all the parts to do this with. I just, I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to do it at another time. But, uh, I'm, I'm trying to record this part of the video so I can get it out of the way. You see that sensor right there? That is the speed sensor. And what that controls is your, uh, it controls your fuel mileage, it controls your speedometer and all that. And when it's out of whack, it throws off the transmission, it throws off the computer, it throws off everything. Well, that's one problem. And I, did, I figured this out by doing research going on Ford forums and, and reading and all that kind of stuff, and you can do the same thing. Now, let me take you up under the hood and I'll show you what else we have found out. This is probably the majority of the problem why this truck is getting such bad gas mileage. You see this thing right here? For those of you that are not familiar with it, that is an EGR valve or a fuel recycling um valve basically what it does it takes fuel vapors from the engine that, that escapes through the exhaust and it recycles it back into the engine so the engine can burn it again and that actually helps increase fuel mileage well i'm going to put some photos right here and these photos are of codes that I checked, and these is what the code. These is what the codes were. One of the biggest ones was it had a vacuum leak or a lean code. And if you notice that hole, that right there is a vacuum hose, and it connects right there. And that nipple right there is broke off inside the hose, so I've got to get that out. But what? Hold this up, Nate. What this is right here, it's hot. It's got water in it. You better be careful. What this is, it is the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, the, the, um, well, you can look at it right there. I don't remember the name of Real it. You, nice. You can see it. Hot what? Real nice telling me to hold this up knowing it was hot. Is it that hot? It's not that bad. I can sit here and hold it with my hand. It's barely warm, how dude. You, how, how armored are your hands from running a weed eater? Well, I'm... I've got working man's hands. But anyway, this thing right here tells the computer how much gas uh, fumes are flowing through this and how and this regulates how much of the fuel fumes or fuel, whatever you want to call them, fumes, uh, vapors, or whatever, to put back into the engine. Well, this this thing right here is clogged. That's one of the things that caused this thing to break. Because it's got such strong suction on it, it got weak and it busted. So, what this video is going to be about... Let me turn the camera around. What this video is going to be about... Mm, the gnats are all over me because I don't have my glasses on. What this video is going to be about, guys, is me teaching Nate how to work on and maintain his own vehicle. This is not about the truck, guys. This is about teaching my son how to work on the vehicle he's going to be driving. So I hope you stick around. This is not a normal lawn care video, but this is a father and son journey video. And I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you'll continue to stop, Nate. And I hope you'll continue to watch. So we'll see you on the next go around. Now guys, what, what we're going to try to do first, Nate's holding the camera, but he's going to watch me do this. You get you a pair of needle nose pliers and... You might, I might have to hold this, get this, pin this back where it won't be in my way without breaking it. There we go. That's good. Now, 
that hose is very thin yeah, that whole thing is broke off okay that's part of the okay that's just part of the hose okay because see that one's the same way see i learned something different too so we gotta but have this, something else this no this nipple right here you see how that was connected there this nipple right here is broke off and obviously it didn't go down in here it just broke off and fell off so but that that is where the vacuum leak is coming from because this is sucking air from the engine or this is sucking air from the engine and yeah this one right here this is sucking air and it's sucking air through here because it goes down to the engine there I don't know exactly where this one goes, but what's the duct tape for? That's just I don't know. It was on there when I bought the truck. It probably it probably is something that needs to be repaired the right way. I just it never given any problems to my knowledge, so I just left it alone. But anyway, guys, uh, you can make a boat out of duct tape. Yeah, when when we get when we come back, it's going to be instantaneous for you. But it, this will probably be done tomorrow. Cause this is Sunday afternoon and we got some other stuff we've got to do. And uh, we're going to be changing the speed sensor and this, and then we're going to put gas back in it and then check the fuel mileage then and see if it improves any. So you guys stick around. We shouldn't do it tomorrow cause stuff goes wrong on Mondays. Uh, yeah, and we're going to be on that route. So I've, got a, you, I've got a point. <laughs> and t and tomorrow's Memorial Day, so we probably won't do it. So, so anyway. Probably Tuesday, but instantaneous for them nonetheless. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, we are under the truck. It's the next day. It's actually Memorial Day Monday. And oh, my neck's going to hurt tomorrow. Oh, yeah, mine too. But uh, I'm under here. I'm going to talk Nate through this because he's never done that before. Is this... That's the for that was the, the truck when I bought it had air shocks under it, and when they busted, I took them out and put the coilover shocks on it. And you never took that wire out. And no, there's no reason to take it out. But anyway, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk, talk him through this, teach him how to do it. So if he ever has to do it, he knows what to do. So the first step you got to do, Nate. You see that cord right there, that plug. Mm -hmm. Gently pull on that, wiggle it, and unplug it. All right. Now there's a there's a bolt on the back of that thing, or back here, right there. You have to find out what socket fits that. Look at it so we can tell the people watching what size socket it is, and get your ratchet out and make sure it's on loosen, and take it take the bolt out. And you have to work that um that that ain't that one. Hand that hand that one here. And that socket here. Well, I will if I can ever get it off the ratchet. No, you pr press the thing on the top and no. it pops right off. Oh, duh. Yep. Now, you're going to have to go through several I apologize in advance, in advance if I cuss. Really? Several of them? Well, now make sure it's on loosen. Le lefty loosey, righty tighty. That's, that's tighten. That's tighten. Alright, it should be fairly easy to break loose. Here, I'll hold it on just in case. Oh, God. There we go. Okay. Alright, you should be able to run out with the socket now. Take the socket off and see I'm if it's off. Hold on, it's not, the camera's not aimed right. There we go. It was, it fell. Yeah. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Pulling. Alright, you lay it right there where you can get to it fairly easy. All right, now this is the tree. This is tricky because that thing's in there tight. Grab right there and kind of wiggle it back and forth, and it should come out of there. Which if, direction is it supposed to come out? Straight up. There you go. Oh, there was like some suction on that one. Yeah, let me see it. <laughs> it went. Yeah, I don't know what. I'm comparing the two guys make sure they are the right yep that's it they probably just All right. it's, the problem is that they probably just can't speak now, the same language put that one back well yeah Fords are funny that way if, if this doesn't work with the speedometer 
one was trying. We were gonna have to. We're gonna have to go to the dealership and order a motorcraft, and God help us. Did you put the bolt back in. Yeah, put the bolt back in. Did you get it seated in there real good? I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Guys, forgive us for the camera angle. This is the only angle we could get where we could actually have the camera on the tripod. So, for that, we apologize. We need a short tripod for stuff like this. Yeah, we do. Or a shorter tripod. And guys, if you're wondering what this, what size rear end is in this thing, I think it's an 8.8 uh, .8 millimeter. I won't swear to it though. I right. wish it was a nine inch forward. Now put this back now in. Plug this back on there and believe it or not, did it click or snap kind of? Now. Oh, well, I don't think it really does. I no, mean, it doesn't. That's what I was fixing to tell you. You just gotta go to, now this is from the factory. I guess this is Ford's idea of a safety net, but you you work that work that back up on there, right on around that clip right there, because that's I called the Ford dealership, and they said that's supposed to be on there, and that's it. Now we're gonna go up under the hood. I go get some channel locks so I can pull, tighten that up even further. Well, I I don't think you need to. Because if you tighten it up too much, you're going oh, to Oh, plus that's it. flimsy. Huh? Yeah. Oh, All right, Nate, pop the hood. There you go. There you go. Now guys, in case I didn't tell you yes, uh, when we recorded the first part of this, this truck is not equipped with a 5 liter. It's equipped with the 5.8 or 351 Windsor. So... This part right here is what we've got to change out. So Nate, let me keep, make sure that you're in the shot here. It was the ancestor of the coyote. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad, guys. Let me get you over here where you can see what we're doing. All right, there. There we go. Go ahead and unplug that gently. This? Yeah. Unplug it. Now, let's see what uh, socket that it fits that thing. I'm just going to, let me look at it. That, it looks like just a little bitty wrench. Well, I mean, that's tiny. No, that's uh, probably a 8 millimeter. There's a 9. Try that one. Nope. Is that it? Too, too, too big. big. Alright. Got it. Which side, what size is it? Eight. Eight okay. millimeter up to what I said. That's what I said. All right, get your ratchet and an extension. All right, come over here and just take the bolts loose. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to unplug that first. Let me go get a pair of pliers. Got to unplug the vacuum holes. Let's hope he doesn't sing again. As your granddaddy would say, a pair of pliers. Or your great granddaddy, that is. Mm-hmm. See, that broke too. Oh. Yeah, we're we'll going to dig that out of there. Go ahead and get that sensor off. Is it is the vacuum leak thing the thing we're fixing now? Nipple? Yeah, that, that one right there has been leaking, and that one there was dry rotted and broke, and I didn't know it. <clears throat> but this truck's got 239,000 miles on it. So. No, yeah, I know. I'm not complaining. I was just asking if that one would do that. Yeah, we thought crazy either way. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah. That asking if that's what we were fixing. Well, that code is a lean code, which means the engine, the air that's going into the engine is not being read by the MAF sensor, and therefore it's not given, it's either given too much fuel and not enough air to balance it out, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons why it's getting such bad gas mileage. Don't drop that nut, whatever you do. This channel is kid friendly. 
and it always will be. Look at the frame rail on the driver's side. I know, I know. I'm just saying that's what Ooh, it looked that like. Tough. What? I got, I got it. I got it. Don't drop it. I won't. You know how to keep from dropping a nut like this? When you're taking it off, you put slight pressure against it. I that know. way, when it comes off, you just come right off in your fingers. Yeah. Now. That's what I did. Now. Let me get the, oh, the new one out of the packet. What's that even do? That is the sensor that tells the computer in the truck how much fuel vapors the EGR valve has collected and puts it back into the engine and it regulates that basically and, and it re relays that information back to the computer. Now what we got to do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like, this on I'm camera. I'm like you, I, I know we never could, but I wish we could rebuild this motor. Well, we probably will when it comes time to do that. You know what? I'll go get the pliers so we can... Uh, up, up. I'll go get the pliers so we can take those nipples out. Okay. Probably need needle nose pliers. Yeah, that's it. That's the right one. It is not a motorcraft. Guys, I found out. I'm going to see if, if I don't... I don't know if I'm in the shot or not. Well, hold on. I will be. There I am. Hey! Um, you cannot get a motorcraft like this. It, it, with this this part with a gen, as a genuine motorcraft they don't make them anymore um i called five different parts houses i even called the ford dealership and they said this part is not available anymore the only thing you can get it in is the aftermarket so i went to amazon and i ordered this part and the speed sensor and i will leave a link in the description box below for both of these parts so if you have a truck like this whether it be a 5.0 or a 5.8, you can find these parts on Amazon. You got it, son? Get that one right there. Uh -huh. All right, now we're gonna see if we can get this thing back. All right, guys, we got it clean. We had to take the pipe, the hoses off. Oh, wait a minute, Nate, let me get this. You said we did. Bottom one, well, well, the bottom one will get, will be easier. This one will be easier to get on once we got the bottom one on. That's what I mean. Put the bottom no, on. I mean, this one will be easier to get on before we put the bottom one on. Yeah. Yeah, more, more room to work. Then again, that one's smaller. Exactly. It'll be less in the way. Service choice. Oh. Well, I don't know if I can get this one. Let's see if I can get this one. I know those mats are absolutely disgusting and awful. Okay, guys, we think we got it figured out. This is as much a learning process for me as it was him because this new um, sensor seems to fit looser into those hoses than the old one did. Or at least that's the way it appears. So. Well, it ain't gonna go, but just so far, because if you do, if it does, it's not gonna go up on the studs. <clears throat> That's probably why it's got that orange boot in there to keep it from leaking. Yeah, but look, there's a big gap. I know, but I saw someone say it's probably why that boot's in there to keep it from leaking. Um, so you're saying now reseal? I hope so. Alright. I don't like that. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Is this up on there as far as it'll go? Uh-uh, you gonna break that thing? 
you're gonna break and that's a, that was a I think it was the $35 part just put the put the nut on it well I will you I'm trying to get the plug out the way son go ahead trying to get the plug out of your way I'll take the fix it and clear the codes out of it and see if we get another one. and see and drive it for a little bit guys we'll do an update video on this thing if everything uh, if this straightens out fixes the problems I don't over tighten it but you, you, it's got a ground right there that's what that brass part is for in there to, or that copper you part in the ground It ain't it yet needs some it needs some um, PV blaster on it, lube it up. No, I need to hold it on there better. Well that too, but I was not trying to bring attention to that. Keep going. Well, it, it, it comes off in my hand while I keep enough. going. I'll plug it back in. <laughs> hey, one way to plug in. I know. Got a keyway way on the right way. All right, all right, guys. Let's drive it down the road and see what we got. All right, guys. We're back in the truck, uh, getting ready to leave to go uh, put gas in it. But anyway, I'm gonna use the fixed uh, OBD2 uh, scanner to clear the codes. That way, we will know if later if what we did fixed any problems, or if it just led to more problems. So the way, if you haven't seen my video. On this, I will leave a link in the description box below for that. And if you don't have one of these, you need to get one. So anyway, what you do, you turn the ignition on. And it's going to ding. I can't help that. You go down here and you plug it into the port. No, no you, you take the port cap off. Okay, I thought <laughs> it was off. I don't have my eyes on. So it's upside down. Oh. Well, I can't hardly reach it. There you go. Now you turn the app on right here on the phone. Scan. Hi. There we go. Click the ninety six. Major driving impact. Yeah, that's just the codes that are in it. Those are the codes right there, guys. There's the first one. System 2 lean, bank 1. And then the uh, DTFE sensor. That was the one we put on under the hood. The For the vacuum. And lane. then the circuit fault. That was the speed sensor. And the ignition module. That, that code right there means that the... Because of the um, because of the EGR valve sensor, it is not communicating with the uh, fuel injection or the, the the crankshaft sensor. So anyway, you use this tool, and you no no where's the clear check engine light? Okay, there we go, and it clears the codes. And you have to do this so you'll know later on when you scan it if anything else come up or if it fixed the problem. And now, now think now it's trying to tell you which vehicle it is, but it did. Yeah, it did clear them. Yeah. So now we'll unplug it. Okay, we'll unplug drive, it. We'll drive it a little bit and then we'll um, scan it again, right? Yeah. Well, Look. we're going we're gonna to put some gas in it. And then we're going to check the mileage and see what it was. It was getting seven point, I think it was 7.3 miles to the gallon. All right. Which is nowhere near what it should be. First, getting. let's quit. Let's uh, cut this truck out from being a sweat box. Yeah. Because you turned 50 shades of shine. <laughs> it's hot, boy. I, pro I probably did too. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't get too cocky yet. 
We got to get it at about 40 miles an hour. I'm not saying doing it, do it now, I don't, and I'm not saying I do it. You could do it because you're experienced, but I, I wouldn't do it. But I don't think we've ever done a, a, a zero to sixty test on this truck. It won't run much faster than sixty. than what it was it was getting 7.3 7.4 something like that and it's getting 9.4 so do it taking the um the catalytic converter off gave it another, another two miles to the gallon one of the catalytic converters. yeah so we're gonna we're gonna drive it for a little bit i'm gonna reset the mileage reset trip reset the trip mileage and then we're gonna drive it and see where this gets us so we'll conclude this video when we come back and refill it up and then check the mileage. All right, guys, it's been almost a week since we did the repairs on this truck and we did them on Memorial Day. Today is Friday, the Friday after Memorial Day. And we haven't had really much opportunity to drive this thing because we've been so busy this week. But I just wanted to give you a uh, touch. We've driven 56 miles and it's used less than a quarter of a tank of gas so we're thinking that we're going to be getting uh, based on the math based on the math we don't know yet we're still we still got some more driving we got to do but based on what i'm seeing thus far we're thinking we're going to be getting between 12 and a half and 13 miles to the gallon but we don't know yet. We're gonna check them. We're gonna check the math. We're gonna be honest, and we're gonna let you guys know exactly what we found. So the next time you see us, it'll probably be a day or two later. But we're working on it. So just stay tuned. All right, guys. We're on the last leg of this journey. Uh, we're almost down to a quarter of a tank which is where we started. And uh, we're gonna fill it back. We're gonna put the same amount of gasoline in it, 7.4 gallons. And we're gonna see what the results are. Hopefully, and prayerfully, we've increased the gas mileage significantly. So y'all stick around. We're gonna pull in here, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna record filling up too, and see what we can find out. Well, the ga all the gas pumps are full. Hold on. Well, that one's not. Maybe I can squeeze in there. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to run over this guy. All right, then. Hmm. Oh, that's... All right, guys. We're putting gas back in. Back in him. What do you want to call it? We're at the same gas station, but at a different pump. Well, the pump that we did fill up with is available, but we're already here, so... Dear Lord, that thing is all twisted. Turn around there. Is it? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we're going to go for 7.4 gallons. So put the camera right there, Nate. Cue time lapse music.
we've got the same amount of gas that we have used and pumped through this entire test. Are you recording? Mm -hmm. uh, through this entire test. So now let's go check the trip mount, the, the mileage on the trip meter and see what we've got and then we'll do the math. All right, guys, we got it filled up with gas. Well, not filled up, but we put 7.4 gallons in it. What well, we've put in it since we started this test. Now I'm gonna turn the ignition on. You're gonna hear the dinging. And uh, be careful they, of the dinging. Bring, bring the phone over here because I want to show them the trip mileage when I turn it on. You might want to get closer than that because it ain't gonna pick it up if you don't. Okay, can you see that, guys? Let me have. Let me. Let me grab it, Nate. Yeah. I got it, I got it. You see the trip mileage, it says 105.4 miles. So let's do some math. Okay. It was getting seven and a half miles to the gallon. So let me get my calculator. 105.4 divided by 7.4 equals. And we have a grand total of 14.2 miles to the gallon. We doubled, we almost doubled the gas mileage in this truck just by replacing the speed sensor and the EGR sensor. And taking the catalytic converter off. And taking the catalytic converter off. So guys, it can be done. And don't think the, the catalytic converter clogs it up. It, the one that was on it was clogged up. The, a, fa a regular catalytic converter won't cause that. It's bad. No, we, um, there was the factory catalytic converter that's on the fr that was on the front. And I'm not going to go into a bunch of semantics because it's not necessary for this video. Just put it in, just put the video we explained yeah. all that in the end screen. But what, what we, what, what, what I'm going to do next, um, I'm trying to get, we're trying to get this truck back roadworthy and economically feasible for Nate to drive on a regular basis. And uh, the next thing in the step of trying to improve how it runs, the gas mileage and everything, is do a full tune up on it because. It hasn't had a tune-up in 80,000 miles. So that that's a video for another time. We're going to conclude this video here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. This is not about the truck necessarily. This is about teaching Nate how to take care of his truck. And so I hope you enjoyed the father and son ride-along. And um, uh, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is Brian and Nate with Big South Outdoors TV reminding you live big, live southern, and live outdoors. Until we meet again, folks, have a good one.